course is uh, marijuana hospitality, hospitality establishments. And uh, as everyone, I'm sure on council probably knows, maybe Mr. DeBono, I'm not sure if you know it or not, but we do currently have a moratorium on, a, on the establishments that we put into place some time back uh, when the state of Colorado legalized the ability to have hospitality rooms in a community and we were given the opportunity to uh, opt out, which we did, and we can opt back in if that's the way council wants to go forward at some point in time. Uh, Mr. Downs has provided us with a draft ordinance uh, that uh, hopefully everyone has had an opportunity to review. Uh, and Mr. Downs, I guess what we're looking for tonight is mostly just conversation on this about the draft ordinance or any issues that we can see. Uh, I don't think, are we looking for a consensus to move forward with this at this tonight or we're going to just have conversation and the consensus could be either to or not to bring it forward. Um, and then if it's brought forth as a first reading, is that what you're looking for? Sort of. Um, yes, that is that is what I'm looking for, and I, um, I, I am wanting to just kind of give you guys a little bit of background, if I could, please, and, and let you know what we have here. And I, um, and, and thank you, Mayor and Council members. I want to say that the attached materials, first of all, um, first of all, you have a map, and that map indicates a thousand feet from HTA. I'll, I'll get to that in a second, but, but that's what that map indicates. Um, and then you also, you have all of the law on the subject in the state of Colorado is a difference. In that, you have the ordinances from the three municipalities that have um, hospitality clubs, or, or as they call them, the social clubs. I'll get to that in a second. You also have the few state statutes. Um, council, the, the council members who have been on for a while will recall, we were talking about, uh, I think it was a, a house hearing some time ago when this uh, legislation was initially introduced and it was going through the uh, legislature. I don't think it was a Senate bill, I think it originated in the House. Anyway, the few statutes I have given you, 4410, 609, and 4410-610 CRS are the uh, two statutes on point that that, that House bill contained. Uh, 609 is on uh, hospitality clubs without sales, uh, and 610 is hospitality clubs with sales. And I would like to say too, as I begin this, that um, I tend to use the term consumption club synonymously with hospitality club. And I think not only is it more descriptive in terms of what would be going on, what does show on in these facilities, but it's also how Denver and Colorado Springs caption their ordinances. They call what they have consumption clubs, not hospitality clubs. But anyway, if you get confused, please understand that I just tend to call them consumption clubs because that, that is what's going on. Now, as you can tell, the two main types are consumption clubs where the sale of marijuana does not occur, that's consumption clubs only, or consumption clubs where the sale of marijuana does occur, but only an amount that a person can consume on premises. No one can buy more than that at a at a hospitality or consumption club with sales. You can only buy the amount that is designed for on-premises consumption. Um, so there, there are really, just so you can kind of think about this and get kind of a clearer picture, because I've, this is kind of uh, crystallized in my mind as I, I've been thinking about it. There are really two kinds of consumption clubs without sales. The first one would be if you had a, an existing business and that did not have a liquor license, but an existing business where people wanted to legally consume marijuana. 
one. Let's say you had a tea slash coffee shop, and that existing business decided that they wanted to have an area where people could come in. They would be bringing their own because that's what you do in a consumption club or hospitality club without sales. You bring your own in for consumption, and they would go in and have an area where they could consume marijuana. Now, that's one type. And, and another type, like, let's say you have a hotel in town where they want to have an area designated for where people can go and consume marijuana. Uh, my sense is that there are places like that that do that now, but of course they're not allowable. They're not legit, and they can get in trouble for doing what they're doing. So anybody who, let's say I have a hotel and people are consuming marijuana there, I could go to the city and get a consumption license without sales and have an area where people can consume marijuana at my hotel. They're bringing their own. I'm not selling any amount. They're simply coming in and consuming marijuana. So the two types of consumption or hospitality licenses or facilities without sales well, I, so the first one is the existing business, tea room, coffee shop, um, uh, or, or, or a hotel. The other one would be a freestanding building. Like you just have a place, you, you've decided you want to have a place where people can come together and consume marijuana. And, and you're not going to sell, you're just going to have a place where they can consume. So that is another, that is the second type of consumption club. Now, I have had to leave alone how people are going to make money off of this. I don't know how they would, and I guess it was hard to cut the charge. I'm leaving that alone. Okay, for a long time, I asked that question, but that's not for, for me to really ask, because people want to do this even if they're not making money. Now, moving on to hospitality or consumption clubs with sales. Now, this is, if you've had a chance to look at the ordinance, this is a new license type. That is, it is a manner in which people can sell marijuana, small amounts of marijuana. This is what the state of Colorado is allowed with this, where people come in and they buy marijuana, again, to consume on the premises. And you know, so, so just two points, and I, We'll kind of bring this to a conclusion in a, in a few moments. I think the way that people envisioned that happening when they first talked about this was if people had a retail marijuana store, but they had a space next door, okay? You would have to have complete separation from the store. But you have a space next door, walled off, and that is a place where they could provide small amounts of their product for people to come in and, and consume it, these small amounts. That's why some places call these things tasting rooms um, or, or sampling rooms because that way that marijuana facility, that store could provide them with the marijuana. So, so that is kind of one model that is an existing business retail marijuana store where it would be easy for them to have a space right next door that they would supply with their product. Okay, that, that's just an example. The, the other one is, is a freestanding marijuana consumption uh, facility um, that, that has sales. And it does not have to be, I, I don't mean to confuse things, it does not have to be associated with an existing marijuana facility. It simply doesn't. This license type would allow people to go, you know, a person who has this license, to go purchase product for consumption in their facility. And so I don't want you to think, again, that you have to have some other kind of marijuana license you have to have any other kind of marijuana license in order to do this. You don't. And so those are, you have the two main categories. Those are kind of the four subcategories that I envision. And just in the retail marijuana
water store with a separate space for a consumption license with sales. I, I suppose you could have another existing business, like my earlier example, the tea shop or the hotel also, that could get a marijuana consumption license um, with sales. But, but again, I think just the way people thought about it mentally is kind of attaching it to an existing retail marijuana store. So I want to tell you just a couple of things. Colorado Springs has a consumption, um, has, has a consumption only ordinance. All you can do if you don't buy your consumption facility in Colorado Springs. Denver is the same way. And I think that's why they caption their ordinances again as consumption ordinances. Denver calls it a consumption pilot program. Colorado Springs is simply consumption. The only place where you have a, um, a, a, uh, a marijuana consumption facility with sales is in Glendale. And my understanding is there is one of them and only one. And so nobody else has really, you know, jumped into this whole thing in terms of the consumption uh, facility with sales. Now, I, I'm about done, and I, I know you have many questions. I'm sorry for talking so long, but those, those are things that even if they didn't register with you, uh, I, I felt a, a need to say. The last thing is, are if this proposed draft ordinance kind of goes into our existing marijuana code? That's why we also have a copy of the existing Trinidad um, Marijuana Code, and that is all the CEP provisions, all the zoning provisions, all the uh, requirements for a marijuana license that exist in the current code would apply to this as well. And I want to just say, this map, to get back to this, you can have a marijuana facility in VHP zoning, things like that. But what is a deal breaker is you can't have a marijuana facility within a thousand feet of an existing or established school. And that's why that's why we have this. And that thousand foot radius in the attached map basically eliminates all of the VHP and um, but that is a thousand feet from HTA. So I'm sure there are things I can say that are going to correct, but I, I want to have you yield to ask questions. Start with Mr. Goodall. What I always envisioned if we decided to have this was what I thought we would be able to control the best would be a place with sales because if you have people bringing in um you have no control over the amount of product that people are consuming i like better an ideal where it is to be sold um and that's how they would generate their revenue i think it would be a good ideal to reach out to the marijuana businesses in town to see if anybody would even be interested in doing this and possibly asking for some sort of business plan, how they would make this work so we could get an ideal what someone was looking to do. Um, we have all the power to write whatever uh, rules we want in this as far as uh, ventilation and everything else. Uh, we know anyone who's been to Vegas is with uh, lack of smell of cigarettes. I mean, we can get a ventilation system that's required that will remove 90 plus percent of all odors and everything, all that smoke out of the room. But I like I like the idea of a place that sells with a very small limited amount of people. If we were going to do this, not a carry the engine or whatever they bring in. Right. And Council Goodall, if I could please really respond to that. I would say I am told that if you allow it for you to be licensed, they are out there and they will come forward. If Mr. Wallace is still on, he knows a number of people who are very interested. And I think these people, and I, I was 
going to do that and say, let's not throw water, you know, people come forward. And then it was kind of like a chicken versus egg kind of thing. And people right. were like, look, you got to be your concern, and we'll, we'll chime in. And I think everybody was kind of tired of hearing me say, well, we'll be, I'll get it for you. <laughs> so, so I, this, this draft ordinance um, is, you know, a lot of what we need, but I, I just want to tell you, they are out there, and I am assured that if you do, you know, adopt an ordinance with respect to this, that people are going to be coming forward to demand. People are even buying facilities now in, in anticipation of doing this, right? So, legally, we could say we are going to start, if we do a pilot program, one store and just do a lottery, can we just have business plans submitted and pick the best plan, or, or how would we be limited in that sense? A lottery would be completely random, and a lottery would be just, uh, you don't even look at the merit side. So it would be hard, we, we could do it, I know the number of municipalities have done this, we could assign a point value to um, applications, or we have to do it, of course, in advance say what well, we're looking for to, to make it objective and not look like we were um, playing favoritism. But I do want to tell you that it is very able staff reminds me uh, frequently when we had a limited number on you know medical marijuana, retail marijuana, when we had a limited number, we had people lining up, you know, beginning in the middle of the night, start, starting to line up at City Hall doors in anticipation for being the first ones to apply. And there, you know, and, and that was that was tough. So and, and also I do want to say like the, the numbers are put in here, the half dozen of each, those are completely random, totally arbitrary, discussion point for all of you. But um, I would just say it is kind of more workable and just it, it just makes more sense if you set a, a set number of these kinds of facilities if you're going to allow them. So say four or six consumption without sales, if you're going to do that, or if you're only going to do consumption with sales, say two or four, um, something like that. So people, and then set a date and then we would have criteria for uh, being able to exclude too many applications <laughs> that more than four by a, a certain date set for receiving applications. All right. That's all I have. Ms. Ogletree. I, I spent a lot of time going through all of this today and probably have um, too fast and so a little too um, detailed and granular for what you're looking for. I have some kind of general questions um, about the, the way that it's set up um, and just I'll try to make that uh, a cohesive thing because I know that we're all getting tired here. Um, one thing is just in terms of definitions um, in, the, in the ordinance, it seems like you're including both the, the with sales and without sales as the defined retail marijuana establishment and that doesn't seem to make sense to me because I don't sense that your non-sale would be would be necessarily a, a retail um, type of establishment so that might be a little confusing in terms of terms but that's it's probably too uh, detailed um, uh, the, the proposed um, set uh, city code section 14211-1 I just want to make sure I'm understanding what you're saying is you're proposing six of each as the, as the total and that would be a total of 12 of these right Les? Well, that, that, was, that was absolutely a random number we had to have a number that plugged in there and okay. I, I am not and I think other staff members are not suggesting a number to you um, we just wanted to insert a number as a discussion point. I'm, I'm not... Okay. Yeah. Okay, and then coming back to what you started this with in terms of moratorium, would we have to um, undo the moratorium to allow for the places that will allow sales? Mm -hmm. Or is it just 
Ms. Griegel. So basically, Ned, you're just wanting us, you're giving us the, the foundation of what we're looking at. You just want an idea of what, if we are in favor of or opposed to the uh, bringing this idea of cost to hell. Thank you. 
Mr. DeBonham. Mr. Shu? So I, I, I don't, I'm definitely opposed to it. I'm not, uh, I don't think it's a good idea for Trinidad. Uh, the marijuana sales are good. People are coming here buying them, usually taking them home. I just don't think we should have uh, the responsibility of having a place like this. Uh, well, you know, it's just uh, we, we back up uh, committees that are drug free and stuff. It's kind of a slap in the face to them if we vote this in. And, uh, you know, it puts a strain on our police department. And uh, just to make it simple, I'm just uh, definitely opposed to it. Mr. Williamson? I had a question. Um, do the marijuana um, operators that are currently uh, selling goods, do they have the same responsibility? to have, um, to not be able to detect an odor outside of their facility? I mean, it's a simple, you know, walk up and down right now, a lot of those shops have pretty strong odors. I was wondering if that's a requirement for It is a, a requirement. They are required to have a filtration system, especially the cultivation facilities. But, uh, but retail marijuana stores are, uh, are supposed to have a filtration system also. So, um, if, if this is off topic, I apologize. If, if that's the case, why is the smell of marijuana so prevalent um, up and down the street? I don't, I don't know. May I? May I? Go ahead. Uh, you may. <laughs> well, so, planning and zoning, when it comes to us, set the guidelines of what we required. And so we set a guideline on backflow preventers doubled up to make sure nothing polluted back. Um, the air filtration systems that were required or what was available on the market at the time and so forth. So they put in what was required. And that's what I would say is an important fact to remember. Technology's 
that from happening. But what everybody put in the existing buildings is what was wrote in and approved by the city for the filtration systems. And, and filtration was a bigger concern for the cultivation facilities. I mean, I, I don't know if it was a big concern the owner of marijuana coming from retail marijuana stores. But so I, I don't know how to explain if there was a smell of marijuana as you walk by the the marijuana stores, but we could require greater, uh, you know, filtration regarding that, as Councilman Goodall just said. Good, could I add one comment to this real quick? This is Wally. Uh, let's, let's, before we go on, I think I'd like to hear from uh, Council first. Okay, that's totally fine. So I have, I have a question. If, if that's the case, is there, and um, the requirements with the existing for those grow facilities to not have outside detectable odor and, and increase the uh, ability to filter particulates, is there any way to have that, um, backwards compliant? Uh, I don't understand what you mean by backwards compliant. Well, I mean, the places that are getting a lot of odor now, is there any way to have them stop uh, with, you know, have better odor control going forward? I, I think so. I mean, if there was a retail marijuana store that has, uh, it is emitting an odor of marijuana and you can smell it from the street, I think that can be addressed. I mean, I, I think that can be addressed. We may need to amend the code with respect to retail marijuana stores, but I do think that they're not supposed to have an odor or discernible odor of marijuana um, is a condition of their conditional use permit. It's clear. Yeah, I mean, I believe when we wrote, uh, we did that in planning and zoning, and we put it in there, the systems that weren't installed at some point in time, we find didn't work up to what we thought was good enough that we could require more. I mean, we, you'd have to go back and look at what the original deal was, but I could have swore having them places in front of us and planning and zoning, telling them that at some point in time, if what we're requiring now isn't good enough, we may require more. Mm. I was just curious, I mean, because if it's supposed to be part of the plan going forward for consumption clubs that they should have detectable odor. Yeah, we have other facilities with a detectable odor. It was just, you know, a question whether it would work out. And if, if it did, then we ought to be retroactive and have the other places be held to the same standard would be my question. That's all I have. Okay, I've got several things here I want to bring to council's attention. Number one, uh, I'm very concerned that we currently have a cap of no more than 20. We've already exceeded that, but we have a cap. Now, if we were to allow consumption clubs, it's going to be in our existing, um, the way all the rules and regulations. So to me, I think somebody who wanted to challenge our cap could come in and challenge the cap to say, we want as many as we can handle. You know, we originally had a whole bunch. So I think there's a, a liability a situation that we're faced with there. That's a concern that I have. Um, a concern that uh, we're exceeding our capacity of the 20 that we've allowed, which we've already, because we backtracked uh, from the original number, we're at like a 26. So we're already over the limit, but that was within, uh, you know, those are all uh, pretty much already in, 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 the, in the group that uh, we had allowed. Uh, so that's a problem. I'm going to wait till I'm done. Uh, the other thing is, is, you know, I feel that there is some liability for an owner uh, it's just like uh, a bar owner, they have to have a bouncer. Uh, are they going to have to hire a permanent bouncer that's going to be on premises that is shielded away from the rest of the group being able to monitor in case there are any issues? The biggest thing is, is 
what benefit is there to the city? Because as we well know, there is only one in Denver. There's one in Colorado Springs. So there's a reason why that there are only one in some of these big metro areas. So my concern is if I, I don't really see that there is a benefit to our community at this point in time by having a consumption club of any type. Um, hours of operation are a concern. Uh, you, some people have already touched on the ventilation issues. The other thing is, I think if, if this moves forward, every anybody who has a uh, hospital or a, a consumption club, they will have to install a fire suppressant system, and that's going to be very costly. Because first of all, if I'm a business owner next to a consumption club and they have carpet in the room or flammable surfaces and there are people using, according to the uh, uh, ordinance that uh, Mr. Downs put forward, where they can use matches, they could use butane lighters, they can use all this other stuff, uh, and something drops and I have a business next, is my insurance going to go up because of the possibility and the liability that this person has put on me, it's a concern. All, well, I would say that all surfaces must be non-flammable. They'll all have to have ADA compliant bathrooms, his and hers. Um, we've already touched on the separation retail from the consumption area. Now, the number of patrons that can be allowed in a consumption club. Now, the big question that I have here, and this has been brought up, is the smoke and drive. And uh, I looked at some information, and from 2013 to 2017, the number of marijuana, can or cannabis induced, or cannabis deaths, or cannabis deaths due to cannabis use. Uh, went from 11.43% in 2013 to 21.3 in 2017. There were 71 deaths in 2013 and 162 deaths in 2017. And that's, so that's 18 and 19 are missing. I don't have that information. I could not find that. So I heard the, the last thing I wanted to say, I think the fee scale on this is way too low. Uh, just like I think our fee scale that we adopted for our marijuana clubs or our marijuana uh, retail outlets was way too low because uh, places like Pueblo and some of these other areas were charging what is it five and ten thousand dollars per licensor like to license them so I think that you know the license is way too low but I so I think you know my feeling on this uh, just by what I brought forward so I'm, I'm just, uh, just, I just don't think that there's a benefit to our community at this point in time with, uh, by having these. Well, you know, if I could please just express a couple of your concerns. I, the police don't think I'm not advocating for right. this. I, I just want to uh, say, first of all, the, regarding the cap, these are a different license type. They're not retail marijuana stores. Our existing cap is on retail marijuana stores. So these, um, these, if you were to approve them, they are not subject to the existing cap that the city has on um, on retail marijuana stores. Okay, before I, I would say also, before you go on, before I want to, I want to have an answer for that, if you if I may, is I know that what you're saying. However, uh, the citizenry of this community are going to say, "What the holy heck are you guys doing now?" You are exceed. They don't understand, and they may have a hard time understanding that. And so we were, you know, we as council people are going to have to do the explaining. But go ahead, yeah, go on. Mayor. I think as you guys always do, you can do a very evil chalk here. I know this sounds like I'm acting up for mayor. People get confused on a lot of different things, and I know you guys have to deal with that. But you can very uh, ably deal with the confusion that people may have on that, and simply 
say you don't need to worry about that because it's a group license site. Look, I, I understand that you just need the site, you don't want them. But I, I want to say to you, it is in the Army Ordinance, it is contemplated that the fee structure for these facilities would be the same as other marijuana license applications. Okay. And you do have to be careful. You don't want to impose a fee structure that is um, that is excessive. The communities that have a higher fee structure, they have greater services attached, like they'll refer out their planning department, things like that. So our fee structure was rationally related to the application process that we adopted, and that's why um, we did what we did, and, and that was contemplated here. Um, regarding liability, I they do have to take on liability. They understand that, and it is like any other business, uh, whether or not it involves marijuana, alcohol, what have you, we all kind of assume that risk. Um, but anyway, the other things, I, I don't want to sound like I'm, you know, parsing your, your many concerns. I get it, but I did want to just address those points. Uh, the last thing I wanted to say is, uh, you know, I know that you threw out a, a random number of, you know, six and six units. And I, I, I could not agree to even get close to those numbers uh, to agree on those. So that's, and I, like I said, just giving you my, my opinions and opinions that I'm hearing from citizens, from the community. Uh, I've had multiple calls on this with concerns from the community. Uh, so that, that's where I'm put, where I, what my thoughts are. So uh, at this point in time, uh, does anybody else have any comments that you want to bring forward? I, I do, if you don't mind, Mayor. I think that, you know, something, the only reason I think we, we should consider these is because the fact the amount of people we have come into this community that stop here, grab, and, and they go. And like Ms. Griego said, when you're looking at the people who are coming out of the business fields, they're the ages from 50 to 75, that are going back to smoking pot like they did in the 60s, that are coming here, if they had a place they could go, they wouldn't come here and buy and leave. They would come here and stay, that have a place to socially gather and make plans to stick around our community for the weekends to go hiking and do stuff like that. So our benefits are more than what we're gonna make just off the sales of the marijuana. It's the tax revenue per person, what they figure through the state, through tourism, I don't know what that number is, 58 cent, whatever the dollar is per person. If we keep an extra 10,000 people in this town at those kind of numbers, then we're starting to look at some serious tax revenue that could be brought, brought into this community. And I think that's why we should be considering it, is giving people a reason to stay in our community and take advantage of all the things we have to offer. And I would never get behind the kind of numbers that less do in there just as a number to throw out. I would never, I don't believe we should get behind a number of more than a couple of places to see how they're going to work and look at some good business plans that we can get behind that we think will work for what we're wanting to do. We get to set the rules and we can make these as stringent. We can require that they have somebody that is in there to monitor no one sneaking pot in to make sure people are only smoking the half a gram or one gram that's under the places that sell. That all the rules are being followed, very stringent uh, air, air systems in there to protect our police or uh, emergency responders if they have to go in. We can set all these rules. We need to, this is a means to keep the tourism up and I think that is a main focus we should be looking at is to keeping those people in this town for more than an hour they're here to hit our pot shops and leave. To have them stick around a weekend and spend their money, spend hundreds of dollars elsewhere than just the marijuana solution. Okay, I, 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 want, I wanted to uh, comment a little bit. There's something that we need to consider. You know, we have some really, you know, we have marijuana, which is what we have, provided us some good revenue. Uh, we're also developing, you know, our space create project, which is a different group of people. But then we also have the uh, 
Fisher's Peak, which is going to bring in a tremendous amount of people. And there may be some that will smoke marijuana, but how many of those would maybe shy away because we do have consumption clubs and we, we also have all this marijuana and all this stuff. So I, I, that, that causes me some, some concern, some heartburn, because what are we trying to build as a community? Are we trying to build a community that is open to marijuana and drugs, uh, which we know that that's a whole different issue? Are we trying to establish a good, clean environment for a fam, for fam, to, to uh, for families to be able to come in? Uh, so that's uh, that's a concern that I have. May I say something? Sure. Uh, I, I don't know which one uh, mentioned uh, which council person mentioned about the the effect of the pot shops on the police department, but. I remember early on when I was first a part of the city council, uh, elected the city council, uh, the police department made it very clear that they had no problem. I mean, uh, with the the pot pot industry here, in town. and I think we're we're stereotyping people that consume marijuana. It's uh, I I liken this to the prohibition years. We don't have to consume it, but why are we denying somebody that wants to, denying them the right to use it? That's their right. Sure. It's legal in the state of Colorado. And I, I think for the same thing there that you just mentioned, the space to create at Fisher's Peak, I think it's a generational thing. You don't see those kids drinking anymore. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not wanting kids to go out there and get stoned and but what I'm saying is what, what we used to do for recreation, but not what they're doing now. And I think it would behoove us to consider it. That's all. Okay. Uh, Les, do you want to get me to get to just a consensus from each council person to see if they want to move forward with the draft order with the ordinance? I think Aaron, Ms. Ogletree may have had another comment. Go ahead, Go ahead Ms. Ogletree. I would just say that I, I agree with um, Councilman Kittle and Councilman Griego. I think what it does for our community is that um, we have a chance to do it right. We have a chance to do it with uh, the limitations that we feel we would be comfortable with. But we're already known for marijuana. There's no turning back that. that that's the sale. That is what people come here for. And I think that it is short-sighted to not think, why would we not make this into a place that people know that they can come and do it safely, do it legally, um, and do it within the restraints that we want in our community. To me, that makes, that just makes logical sense. And the part about, um, you know, I I think we, we have to be uh, grown-ups about the fact that people use marijuana, people use alcohol, and they use those two things uh, for good reasons and for bad reasons, um, but that's not really our our um, our place to judge. I think if we put the requirements on it that would make us feel comfortable with it, then I think we could do it right, and we could show how it can be done to the rest of the state and, frankly, to the nation, because people are looking to us. Okay, you, you know, we have a responsibility to our citizens. We need to listen to our citizens as well. And I've listened to several. And uh, be honest with you, I got a call today, and I don't know how many there are, but there is a petition being circulated uh, for us or to us. Uh, I'm not sure at some point. Uh, so that's, a, that's another. That. So, I, have, I have heard of that. Sorry. I'm aware of that. Okay, uh, Mr. Downs, uh, you know, my question earlier. Yes, Mayor, I, I would ask uh, some general terms if uh, council members are in 
going to go forward with this ordinance and at first reading or inclined to say no if you don't want the, the uh, draft ordinance to go forward if if we could please okay starting with mr glidow i'm a yes Ms. ogletree yes with some edits yes okay uh miss grego yes Mr. DeBonham? No. Mr. Shue? No. Mr. Williamson? It's, it's a long discussion for me, but I'm, uh, I'm erring towards no at this point. Okay. And you know my position at this point in time. So the no. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, other than, uh, are there any other discussion agenda items? I know that uh, Mr. Williamson, you brought something up some time back, and of course, uh, I think uh, Mr. Valentine is looking at it. And uh, has any has council anybody in council have hey, you guys had any other? Uh, agenda items that you would like to bring forward at some point in time? Mr. Goodall? Nothing. Okay, Ms. Ogletree? I think uh, we had a long list of them the last time we met. Yeah. I think we're still working through them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's just nothing new. Ms. Grego? No, I have nothing. Okay. Mr. DeBono? No, sir, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Shu? No. Mr. Williamson? Uh, none at this time. Okay. And I don't have any, like I said, there's a, a laundry list that we have that we're working on now. So, anyway, I know it's been a, a long night, people, but uh, some really good and frank discussion, which is what we're ele we were elected to do. And I appreciate everybody's comments. Thank you and good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.